Supremacy Games. Chapter 1 Ruins Exploration Gone Wrong. My ass is on fire. My butthole is burning. FCK. Make it stop please. With an unsightly face filled with tears and snort, Felix clutched his ass cheeks tightly while rolling on the floor, leaving behind him a trail of blood that was coming out of his anus. His shrieks kept echoing non-stop inside a colossal hall that was floored using tiles and bodies with colorful gems. Walls dyed with amber color that was gleaming under the artificial light of milky white gems, which were holstered on the ceiling. Their bright light displayed not just the walls, but everything that was inside the hall with vivid details. Starting off with the soldier statues, that were standing uprightly at the corners of the hall, each holding a different type of weapon with one arm, while the other arm had a purplish chain rolled up their forearms, just like they were trying to clasp it with their own dear life. Those four purplish chains were connected to a small platform that was in the very center of the hall. They shackled it so tight, that it was a fixed mid-air without any support. At the surface of the platform, a fist-sized flame that had no color just like water was floating and flickering gently above it, while underneath it, two corpses were lying unmoving. Well, it was actually just one corpse, as the other was merely a blackened skeleton. Slam! Felix's unrestrained rolling was finally stopped as he collided with the corpse. If his eyes weren't hazy from crying his heart out, he would have seen that he just slammed into Kathy, his clanmate who joined the Ruins Exploration Party just like him seeking natural treasures and resources to further enhance her bloodline path. Alas, here she was lying cold with one of her eyeballs dug out from its roots. Previously, her eye was assaulted by a needle made of colorless flame that was sent by that entity on the top of the platform. She dug her own eye out, trying her best to remove that needle and stop the hellish agony it was causing her. Sadly, her present form was enough to entail that her attempt failed miserably. Well, look at the bright side. At least she was not dealt with the same fate as Felix, who was still shrieking like a little girl, who just had her lollipop stolen. Although his pain screams were a bit too be chai, Felix could totally be excused since his butthole had just got penetrated by the same flame needle. Finally not able to take any more, he let one last scream and fainted with eyes rolled at the back of his head. To understand why he was even in this f up situation, one must first understand the events that led to this point in time. Seven days earlier, Felix's clan exploration crew picked up signals of a massive amount of energy, coming from a destroyed planet nearby. They were on their way to the clan after successfully finishing their mission. But, after they noticed those signals, there was nowhere in hell they would have simply ignored them and move on. Hence, they changed their course and went directly towards that said planet. Immediately after landing, they noticed that the signals were coming from underneath a destroyed magnificent city that had half of its structures buried deep underground. Just like any exploration team, their senses tingled that it was their lucky day. After all, they just found a deserted city that probably belonged to one of the superior races in the universe. The city magnificence even while destroyed, made them reach such a conclusion. Instead of reporting what they found to their clan like they were taught to, greed took the best of them and made them vote to explore the ruins by themselves. However, the city was humongous, and it would take them years to just explore half of it. Thus, the captain proposed to split up into teams made of three each. Felix, Kathy, and Jaden, who sadly turned into a burned skeleton, formed one team and went to explore the western side of the city. Obviously, during the first day, Felix's party didn't come across anything worthy of their attention. Nonetheless, they didn't give up as they kept on searching for a path that led to the underground, hoping to be the first to reach the place where the signal was emitting from. Yet, they still came out empty on the second day as well. Then came the third day, and still the same disappointing result. On the fourth day, nothing changed. On the fifth day, exhaustion started to wear them out. On the sixth day when they were just losing hope, Jaden spotted a two-meter hole hidden underneath the bricks of a destroyed building while he was taking a piss. However, instead of telling his teammates, he decided to explore the tunnel solo. First come, first serve right. Unfortunately, what he found deep underground weren't long lost legacies, inheritance, treasures, or such as they expected, but a long, very long semi-dark path that led to an unknown destination. Without further ado, he climbed up and went to inform Felix and Kathy. The gloomy semi-dark path scared the shit out of him. He didn't have the guts to tread it alone. After hearing the news, Felix made a decision to not report the situation to the rest, but keep it to themselves. Who could blame him though? The exploration crew had at least 54 bloodliner, 
all aiming to be the first to find the treasures. Felix, who was part of the weakest bunch in the crew, wasn't a retard to give up on such an advantage for a pat in the head. Jaden thought exactly like him. As for Kathy, she wasn't too eager on going with just the three of them alone. However, few enticing words from Felix did the trick making her drop her worry down and explore the path with them. They walked and walked and continued to walk for a straight 12 hours before they finally spotted a sparkle of golden light at the end of the path. If their bodies weren't enhanced from their bloodline integration, they would have honestly dropped dead tired in the middle of the path. They ran towards it with eager expressions. However, the moment they reached the end of the path and saw what was giving off that golden light, they couldn't help but stare wide-eyed not daring to believe their eyes. A gigantic broken gate made completely out of hair and amber stones, one of the rarest luxurious material in the known universe, that could only be extracted from the outer core of a planet, if the harsh conditions of its creation were met. Yet this precious stone that could only be chanced upon by luck, was being used for a humongous gate that reached 50 meters in height, not to mention its width and depth. They honestly were beyond speechless and on the verge of questioning their own reasoning. Still, this gate just made their previous conclusion that the city belonged to an ancient superior race more solid. They knew that those races were a league apart from the human race, whether in strength, culture, wealth, and even technological advancement. There was just no fair comparison between the two. This news didn't make them feel indignant, but actually excited. Excited that whatever was behind that gate was definitely what they came for. They rushed in direction of a slight opening at the bottom of the broken gate, resembling a rat hole in a wall. Felix lay down and crawled on his stomach eating dirt and dust, yet his eyes never stopped shimmering with delight for even a second. After he passed through Kathy and Jaden followed one by one, immediately after dusting their outfits, they raised their heads and stared in shock at the hall that had the small platform shackled mid-air by those four purplish chains and the soldiers' statues, who were clasping tightly those chains. Yet, what truly shocked them was actually the colorless flame, that appeared more like a sphere of water. If it wasn't flickering from time to time, they would have honestly assumed so. Still, they never saw or heard about such an uncanny flame in their entire life. They knew that they just hit the jackpot. There was no way such a strange-looking flame wasn't a natural treasure. In their eyes, the flame must be a natural treasure for fire elemental users. Although neither of them had a fire element, they still could sell it for a shitload of supremacy coins in the universal virtual reality. UVR. They traded quick glances between each other, not knowing how to carry on. There was only one flame, but three of them. It was clear that trusting each other on holding the flame in their spatial card was not an option. They might be clanmates, but it didn't mean they were close tight friends. Abruptly, Felix bolted towards the platform, uncaring about his teammates' ugly expression. He didn't give them a single second to think things through, before forcing them to race after him trying their best to catch up. Yet, he sneakily slowed down his speed, allowing those two to quickly surpass him. They didn't see anything odd about his lackluster speed, as they knew that he was probably still tired from their long walk in the path. Felix kept slowing down his speed until he stopped all at once and retreated next to the hole, which they came from. If those two didn't have their entire focus captured by the colorless flame, they would have noticed that he bailed out. Oh, fresh souls to possess. Not bad. Suddenly, Felix, Kathy, and Jaden all froze in shock after hearing an angelic voice in their minds, sweet and enticing. That might let even the devil himself drop his guard down. Kathy and Jaden, who were the nearest to the flame spirit, immediately turned around, planning to sprint towards Felix. They didn't know who spoke, and they weren't about to stay still in their position to find out. Their gut feeling told them to back off as far as possible. Unfortunately, the moment they entered the flame spirit territory and woke her up, their lives were pretty much doomed. Phew. Phew. Two colorless flame needles were thrown with the speed of light at their heads. One penetrated Jaden's ear, and the other penetrated Kathy's eye. Ah, Kaiwaiaiaia. Before Felix's brain could even comprehend what had just happened, he heard two agonizing screams, far surpassing whatever he had heard in his entire life. His eyes landed on his two clan mates who were currently thrashing around, like fish caught in a net. His legs stiffened not letting him take a single step back. He just kept watching scared shitless. Kathy uses two fingers to dig deep within her eyeball, 
trying to get out that needle. Alas, she dug nothing but her eyeball out with her pale hand covered in blood. Yet she didn't seem to mind, as she only kept screaming and begging for the pain to be over. Sadly, neither her wish was fulfilled nor anyone came to her rescue. She only left two last whimpers before going silent once and for all. TSK she couldn't even handle the first stage of possession. Confused as ever from how things escalated so fast, Felix switched his vision from Kathy's corpse into unexpectedly Jaden who just spoke. Dumbfounded, his eyes made direct contact with Jaden, and instantly knew that was definitely someone else. However, just as Jaden opened up his mouth, trying to speak again, his body started to burn, turning his hands and legs first into ash followed by his torso and head. The only thing left from him were his blackened bones. SHT. Another failure. I had enough of this shitty place. It's been already 20 million years of imprisonment. I have king had enough. The flame spirit cursed in Felix's mind, waking him up from his stupor. Boy, you better not disappoint me as well. She said coldly, without a second delay. Felix turned around and lay on the floor, trying to crawl back inside the hole and leave this damn place. The thought of fighting didn't even cross his mind, as he saw the speed those needles traveled with. He knew that all of his bloodline abilities didn't have a single way to defend against them. Not to mention, if he entered through the hole, his head would be completely protected from those needles that were obviously targeting his weak vitals to reach his brain and enter his consciousness. Do you think the ones before you didn't use the same strategy as yours? She laughed like a deranged person and said, I may not succeed in sensing our souls together, but at least I will add another butthole virginity to my collection. Thank you for that. She said sincerely, scared out of his wits by what he just heard. Felix reflexively tried to turn around and protect his ass. Yet, the hole was too tight to let him make such a large movement. Hold on a second let's talk things through he requested with a cracking voice, hoping to buy a couple of seconds to pass through the other side. Unfortunately, the moment his torso was inside the hole, leaving his lower body outside in the open, he heard the spirit flame say in satisfaction, perfection, as all things should be. Nu, he screamed subconsciously as he felt that his ass was being targeted by a rapist. Phew. The needle flew straight to his anus, resembling a dart hitting the bullseye. The flame spirit must have practiced thousands of times to have such precise accuracy. Ay 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 ay. My ass is melting. I am sorry for ruining your sleep. Please let me go. Henceforth, a symphony of shrieks and beggings resounded in the hall and the semi-dark path. Felix kept trying to move, wanting to ease up the pain by a little bit, yet the hole he was in made it almost impossible. Thus, he crawled back with his face planted on the dirt and hands clasped tightly on his ass cheeks. Immediately after getting his entire body outside, he started rolling from the hole to where Kathy's corpse was leaving behind a long trail of blood. The distance between the two wasn't a joke. He really rolled himself out cold. Inside Felix's sea of consciousness, a colorless flame slowly started to take the shape of a woman that had shoulder-length wavy crimson hair that shone with crystal luster, citrine yellowish eyes that radiate beams of light and heat just like stars. Above them, implausibly artistic black eyebrows, while beneath them, an elegantly straight nose, and white and sensual bright rouge lips. All of those ravishing characteristics were contained within a flawless elegant pale face. That's on an hergless curvy body with a perfect sized chest and rear. Anyone who saw this otherworldly beauty would agree that only the universe beauty could be compared to her, no matter their race or gender. Unfortunately, this stunning image was ruined instantly when she started to touch all of her assets while laughing hysterically. Finally, after 20 million years of imprisonment and millions of souls that I failed to sync with, finally, I found the perfect soul that matches mine without backlash. I is not origin of law finally going to be free. Suddenly she calmed down her joy and thought, no matter what, I have to take control of this soul, even if I sacrifice part of my laws, I cannot let this chance slip by. Soon after, her form started to disintegrate into a mist that spread to cover the entire sea of consciousness. However, just as she tried to ignite the mist so it would burn this consciousness and replace it, a shout filled with anger and humiliation resonated sonorously around the place. Over my dead body, you old hag. The sea of consciousness that was just calm seconds ago began to rise with waves hitting the walls surrendering it. Roars of the sea covered the entire area as the waves kept smashing the soul barrier, trying to demolish it. Asna quickly figured what Felix was doing and yelled with a horrified voice, Stop it, you idiot. Are you trying to kill yourself for eternity? She quickly started to coax him logically. Please stop, even if I destroyed your sea of consciousness, you can still be revived later. 
or at least be reborn in another form. And even if you detonated your soul I would not die with you. Felix, who just woke up for the most traumatizing experience in his life, was having none of her bullshit anymore. I would rather be reborn as a void creature in the universe, than let you have what you want. This is for my butthole virginity. He shouted one last time, as his soul barrier began to collapse on the sea of consciousness. Crash crash. You lunatic Asna screamed in despair. Then suddenly her expression turned crazed as well. I can't let this chance go by. I will start the merging process with his soul, and if it got destroyed, my existence will be erased with it as well since our souls will be connected, even though it's not the freedom that I seek. But I would rather be erased than spent another second in this prison. A few moments later, she finished the process of merging successfully. She sighed in relief and waited for the explosion to happen with a peaceful mild smile. Within the hall, an explosion that had the same power as of Earthling's old age nuclear bomb went off abruptly destroying well just Jaden's bones and Kathy's corpse. The rest remained absolutely unscratched. At the moment of the explosion, near the core of the same galaxy that Felix was currently at, an eye with an astronomical size unsealed itself silently. Its pupil was as dark as a black hole. Not a single light particle was being reflected on it. It glanced at the direction of the explosion and pondered, did something happen to the place I was imprisoned in? He kept looking at the same spot, and instantly created a mirror that showcased everything that happened since the moment the spaceship arrived at the ruins. Interesting. So that witch finally found a soul compatible enough to hold her shameless spirit without backlash. He then started to laugh out loud after seeing Felix detonating himself due to humiliation. Ha 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 ha, you deserve it, you wench. If those old fogies saw what you did, they will probably denounce you for ruining the image of the Unigen race. But since you seek freedom that much, to the point of trying to even erase your existence, I will break the rules of our race, and give you a hand. He then gazed at the explosion, and time was suddenly stopped in that place. Everything was suspended in the same position. The eye looked deep within the explosion, and saw a wisp of a soul that was in the process of being extinguished. Then, it sent two fingers that traveled through space-time, and grabbed it swiftly towards its place. Two minutes later, the eye kept scanning the soul wisp with intrigue. He realized that both of their souls had merged together to form one. But Felix's soul had total control of it. So, if he wanted to give Asna a second chance of life, Felix would benefit from it more than her, since she would only be viewing for his eyes with zero control. He, that's for her to solve, not me. Amused, he chuckled at the wisp one last time and then threw it at its humongous pupil. The eye being sealed its eye slowly in exhaustion, overusing space-time laws to send them into another timeline. Safe journey, he murmured one last time. Chapter 2 Fresh Start On an island, in the middle of the northern Pacific Ocean, a neglected resort hotel was built near a beach. Inside a dimly lighted suite, a young man suddenly woke up with sweat on his forehead, while taking deep breaths each time. He clutched his head tightly with his fingers, trying to dig deep within his brain to stop the agony that assaulted him during his nap. Eruwu. However, he soon gave up his futile attempts, and let out a long shriek, passing out on his bed with rolled eyes. His scream managed to alert the guards who were standing in front of the suite door. One of them rushed inside, heading towards the bedroom while holding a handgun. Young Master Felix, are you alright? He yelled. Yet, he received no response so he kicked the bedroom door open the moment he reached it. He took a quick peek inside the room with one eye. Sure enough, he saw Felix lying on his bed unmoving above a puddle of sweat covering the bedsheets like someone just urinated on them. If Felix's cousin saw the current situation, they would make sure to shame him to death. The bodyguard dashed forward and touched Felix's neck to check if he was alive. As he confirmed that Felix was not dead and probably just unconscious, he sighed in relief. He knew that the family would definitely get him executed if any harm befallen on Felix under his watch. He called for the room service and ordered sternly, You have five minutes to make a tonic that can help someone in regaining conscious. Go make haste. Six minutes later, Felix, whose nose was assaulted by the nasty tonic, regained his consciousness and opened his eyes groggily. Who am I? Where am I? Who is this man who is looking at me like I'm his son? Is he my father? But he is ugly. Am I ugly as well? Before his thoughts jumbled more, a vast amount of memories flooded his brain with great momentum. Unfortunately, his already weak brain after the soul possession couldn't handle the load of them all at once. Thus, he fainted again. His head hit the bed sheet with a plop sound and rolled eyes. The bodyguard's soul instantly escaped his body after hearing that sound. He kept repeating in his mind, 
I am so dead. So dead, so dead. He realized that Felix was probably poisoned. After all, no one just faints for no reason. Not once but twice in a row. He looked at the tonic in his hands like it was a divine artifact, and placed it under Felix's nose, while praying sincerely for Felix to wake up, and not faint again. Felix smelled that nasty tonic again and woke up but this time with clarity in his eyes. Memories of his past life started to rearrange themselves with an order in his mind. After viewing them, he smiled with triumph, just as planned. How can someone like me die such uneventful life? My courage of detonating my soul due to humiliation and wounded pride must have moved some entity into giving me a second chance in life. A second voice suddenly interjected itself while he was bragging, bastard. Your shame truly knows no bounds, to even justify that your rebirth was part of your plan. You really need some serious help. Felix grin instantly stiffened after recognizing this hateful voice. How could he not recognize the voice of the witch who caused him to undergo the most traumatic experience in his previous life? He soon shook his head in denial. I must be tripping due to a mental shock I received, when those memories flooded my brain. His eyes brighten up after remembering a condition he saw online before. It must be that mental condition PTSD. I definitely got it after all the traumatic things I went through. He just kept convincing himself. Definitely. Must. It can only be this. Asna sighed hopelessly. Am I going to be stuck for eternity with this idiot? Felix reflexively cursed her back out loud. You are the idiot, you evil witch. But whole virginity harvester. The bodyguard, who stood silently through the whole process of Felix having a mental breakdown, heard him say this, and felt the soul that just returned in his body, escape yet again. The only thought that coursed through his mind was, I am finished. The poison penetrated his brain and turned him into a moron. He could already envision tomorrow's biggest news in media. One of the heirs of the Maxwell family turned into a retard, and in some hidden corner of the internet, the disappearance of a hard-working man. Tears flooded his cheeks as he saw that image. Felix immediately realized that he was dealing with the real deal after reading her thoughts. Now there was no escaping from her, as she was probably sealed in his consciousness. Asna was pleased with his conclusion. Felix, we have all the time to chat with each other, but now you must fix the situation outside. That poor guy is crying for some reason. Felix knew that she was right, and so he focused on the bodyguard who was sobbing like his life was over. He got up for his bed and whispered in the bodyguard ear, Jack, don't mention what happened here to anyone, as I tried some new drugs on the market that affected my mental state. He then walked to his closest and opened a drawer where he put his cash and grabbed $500. He returned to Jack's side and put it in the side pocket of his suit. Go outside and tell them I was watching a horror movie. That's why I screamed. He patted his shoulder and added, before you go, take the bedsheets with you and get rid of them. Jack nodded his head absent-mindedly and did as instructed. Just as he tried to leave the bedroom with the sheets, he heard Felix's voice, and send someone to fix the door that you broke. Don't worry, young master. The door will be changed in ten minutes. Asna saw that Jack had left said, Now that the third wheel is not here, let's carry on our conversation. What's there to talk about you witch? No matter what you say I will never submit or cooperate with you. My dear Felix, don't you already see what happened to us? She explained with an unhappy voice. Our souls were merged together forming one, and for some unfair reason, you have the control of the main body. Meanwhile, I can only view what is happening from your eyes and not interfere. But I don't want for myself to be like this forever and I guess you also want me to be gone as fast as possible, right? Felix stood in silence for a while and said, first of all, you fucking deserve what you got, and secondly you are wrong. After all, why would I want to do you a favor and free you? We will be forever together, so just relax and enjoy watching me live my life. He chuckled wickedly. Asna did not get mad after hearing his claim, since she already expected this answer based on what she had read from his memories. She replied while yawning, all right, as you wish. You want to play the long game. I will make sure to accompany you step by step. So don't worry and just enjoy your life. If you could that is. She murmured under her breath. After Felix heard the last part, his face became troubled with an uneasy expression. But shorty after, he relaxed his facial muscles and thought, bring it you witch. Let's see who is going to last. Fifteen minutes later, he was standing still in front of the mirror as it reflected his above-average visage. Short curly electric blonde hair, blueberry eyes with dark eyelashes and thin eyebrows, 
Meanwhile his nose was standing defiantly with red thin lips underneath it. His body on the other hand was meh, average in every way, with a height of 177 centimeters, and a weight of 60 kilograms or 132 pounds. As he examined his youthful image, he rubbed his chin in wonder. Such a fine noble face. Yet why was I single my entire life? It must be because females feel inferior and undeserving when next to me and that forces them to not have any feelings about me. That must be the reason. He praised himself shamelessly. Asna rolled her eyes and ignored this narcissistic moron. Chapter 3 Family Tradition After he was done admiring his young image in front of the mirror, Felix began to wear his clothes. While thinking of the present era he was in right now, from his current memories, he believed that he was sent back to the modern era, an era where earthlings were still living in peace and harmony in their little blue planet. But that would soon change after the Supremacy Games invitation, that turned the world upside down before, makes an appearance in the near future again. This was even better for his future plans, since by using the memories of his past life, he could without a doubt ace the games, and climb the ranking ladder even higher than before which would reward him with treasures he couldn't even dream of. His expression turned serious and solemn real quick as he said firmly, this time I will not fool around, and waste my time idling away. If he was dedicated and hardworking in his bloodline integration, he wouldn't have been sent by the clan to do such a difficult mission, but remain in the headquarter being protected and well taken care of like the prodigies. Sadly, he could only clutch his ass with a pained expression in regret. After learning this lesson, by having his asshole blasted to flames by a snaw. His anguish expression was soon replaced by a determined one that would move anyone who sees it. For me not to feel that kind of agonizing pain ever again, I will work harder than everyone. I will make sure to reach the peak. No one will FCK with me again. No one. Crack. He punched the mirror until it shattered, sending small pieces of glass everywhere. Soon enough, he dropped to the ground while holding his bloodied fist. FCK me. He willed in anguish. He already forgot that he was now merely 17 years old with a weak body that couldn't even harm a common tier 1 beast. Jack and the other bodyguard who were near the door heard Felix roar and mirror-shattering sound. Just as the other bodyguard tried to rush to check Felix's well-being, Jack stopped him with his arm. Don't worry it's not serious. Young Master is probably watching a hot-blooded movie and it moved him to his current state. While his actual thoughts were, young master Felix is probably on different types of drugs again. In his mind, he already accepted it as a fact, since it was quite believable. After all, there was nothing much to do on this forsaken island besides going to the beach. If it was not for the Starlink internet, that uses satellites instead of cables, Felix probably would have gone nuts already. Inside the bedroom, Felix was picking up the pieces of the mirror glass from the floor with a bandaged hand. Based on my phone, the current year is 2024-0601. If I recall correctly, the invitation will arrive 15 days later, which is quite an ideal period for me to make plans for later. After a while, he finished cleaning the floor and wore his sports shoes, preparing to head outside. He wanted to scout the hotel in the island's current condition. I am leaving the hotel to take a long walk no need to follow me, and don't you dare send someone behind my back secretly, understood. He instructed Jack after exiting his suite. Yes, young master, just enjoy your walk, no one will bother you. Felix smiled while patting his shoulder. Good, keep following my orders like this, and I will promote you to my personal chief of bodyguards, when I receive my shares from the family. Jack grinned widely, your wish is my command, young master. Felix then walked toward the elevator while examining the horrendous condition of the hotel in detail. Was my brain full of shit? When I chose this business to revive as part of my coming-of-age test or what? He kept walking for a couple of minutes, until he saw the rusty elevator that had a sign glued on the door, that says closed for maintenance. Dot. Figured so. Felix sighed in disappointment. He turned to his left and headed towards the stairs. The moment he arrived and saw those stairs, which were leading to an abyss, he frowned his eyebrows. Fixing the elevator once and for all is a priority. I can't use those stairs each day. My knees would snap. He braced himself and descended the staircase, while trying to organize his 17 years old memories. If he recalled correctly, he chose this resort hotel that was in the middle of nowhere, as his adulthood test, when he reached 16 years old to live the five years of the test, idling and sunbathing, he soon berated his young self-laziness that costed them dearly later on. After all, while others were trying their best to revive the companies, hotels, restaurants, which they chose as their mission, on the other hand, 
he was sunbathing here like a salted fish. This negligence towards his test costed him heavily later on when the Supremacy Games invitation arrived. The other juniors who tried their best even if their project didn't do well, were still chosen to be nurtured by the family, in order to be sent to clutch the USA national team slots. Meanwhile, the lazy ones like him, who took the family coming-of-age tradition as a joke, were punished heavily by the Board of Elders. Since his parents and other close relatives had died one way or another, he had no one to vouch for him anymore within the family. Just as he wanted to keep on his nagging, he remembered his parents. One of the few ones who loved him in that wolf den, where competition to obtain benefits for oneself was but the norm and every method to do so was allowed, as long as no one gets harmed. His parents were quite popular in the Maxwell family with their business handling skills, as his father managed five Wall Street investment funds with high efficiency, making profits in all of his desired investments without a single failure. This sort of guarantee success caused everyone in the business circle to refer to him as the spider, since his investment senses were that sharp. Meanwhile, his mother managed tens of five-star hotels and a few three-star Michael restaurants worldwide. Their reputation reached a peak in her hands, as every customer or critic who visited her ate in them, left only good remarks behind. Unfortunately, they passed away in a helicopter incident when they were heading to the family headquarter to surprise Felix on his 11 years birthday. Well, they did manage to surprise him all right. When he heard the news of their death, while he was cutting his birthday cake alone in his room. One could only imagine the trauma this event might have caused to young Felix. Since that moment he changed into a different person, he became shameless, playful making pranks on his cousins, laying them on a daily basis, until they feared his existence. They complained to the adults to punish him, but the elders knew that his playful personality emerged only to hide his pain and fear of loneliness deep within his heart. So they closed one eye and allowed him to bully them, to the point they created an anti-Felix alliance, grouping and beating him up. Whenever he tried to prank one of them, two years quickly passed by. Felix matured a tiny bit since then. He stopped harassing his cousins after he realized that it was not worth it to get beaten up just for a prank. He then became lazy and unproductive. His school marks were below average, while his friends were the typical second-generation nouveau rich kids who think with their penises and not their brains. If they had one that is. The years went by until he reached the most important year in his life which was the age of 16. The reason why was because the entire life of every junior within the family depends on the coming-of-age tradition, where they needed to pass a test that spans five years' duration. This test entailed that one must revive a dead business, such as a company on the verge of bankruptcy, a restaurant that had negative reviews, hotels that had a bad reputation from their customers, or just were not performing well in general. If the junior managed to successfully revive his business in a period of five years, the family board would reward him with 49% shares of that project. That meant, the bigger the company or hotel you revive, the bigger your reward. 49% of shares in the restaurant were not the same as owning 49% in car manufacturer company. But if they failed the test, they would have only two options left to choose from. The first one was to live their life freely without family control or resources, while the second one was to pick any business that fits their talents and manage it with only 10% profit shares. This tradition was the reason why the family kept growing successfully, while at the same time keeping their resources at bay, without risks of losing them to outsiders. Meanwhile, Felix could not have cared less about the test or his future. He only chose this resort hotel as his project, was to idle away from everyone else. Felix woke up from his reminisce, as he chuckled at his younger self tantrum, that caused them to get left behind in terms of bloodline integration. He smirked evilly, since this daddy is back my dear cousins, you can forget about getting resources from the family, as I will make this resort hotel the best in the world where only elites can step on this island. He then laughed out loud with spaghetti legs, wobbling continuously, not able to support his weight, after descending those hellish stairs. And I know just how to do so. Chapter 4 The Three Choices After finally reaching the ground floor of the hotel, Felix who was planning to take a long walk on the beach, sat down on a couch near the receptionist's desk, while panning like a dog. If walking down the stairs turned me into this, what will happen to me if I climbed? As he imagined that scene, his eyelid twitched after seeing an unpleasant outcome. He turned his head to the reception lady who was playing on her phone while chewing gum. Layla, you better rush the maintenance team to fix the elevator ASAP. If I returned from my walk and didn't see it fixed, I swear to God I will ride on your back up the stairs. Understood. Layla who was playing peacefully on her phone, 
heard Felix warning and popped the gum on her face with a blush. Yes, yes, Yangji Master, if you came back and found the elevator not working, don't mention riding me up the stairs. I will allow you to ride me whenever you want. Layla regretted the instant she said the last part, as she was not thinking properly, since she always had a crush on Felix. Her feelings were honestly pretty understandable. He might be a lazy brat, but he also was handsome, rich, and even an heir of a business empire. What do I do? He must think I'm an easy girl now. She thought almost tearing up. Do you think I am that thirsty to force myself on you? He threw his head back and stood up with difficulty from the couch. He then walked towards the wide open entrance. Just focus on fixing the elevator. I will be back in four hours. Even when I indirectly offered myself to him, he still didn't make his move. Layla sighed dejectedly as she eyed his back. At least there's still a chance for him to ride on my back up the stairs. If the elevator was not fixed, she murmured under her breath with flushed cheeks. Yet before she went too far, she snapped out of her fanaticism when she realized that it was not worth it. After all, she couldn't even climb those stairs by herself. Don't even mention doing it while carrying Felix on her back. Sure, it would feel good for the first couple of minutes, but later on, it was going to be pure misery. Without further ado, Layla used her phone to call the repairman. Hello, Mr. Kled. Can you tell me how much time will you need to repair the elevator? 8 hours Miss Layla. If it was someone else he will need 16 hours minimum. A gruff voice came from the other side of the phone call. Layla felt her heart sink at his answer. Well, I need it fixed in 4 hours. I don't care what you do to repair it. I need it working when the young master returns. If you manage to do so successfully, you will be rewarded by young master Felix himself. And you know that he is quite generous with his tips. Layla felt no shame promising something she had no control over, since her life was on the line here. Challenge accepted. I promise I will fix it within four hours. Just speak some good words on my behalf when you meet the young master. Kled replied with an eager voice. Layla sighed in relief and said reassuringly, Don't worry, young master would not mistreat you. Thank you Miss Layla. Goodbye, I need to prepare my tools. Goodbye. She ended the phone call and started cleaning the gum from her face, while holding a small mirror in front of her. Up in the hill, near the beach, Felix could be seen standing at the peak, observing the entire resort hotel with scornful eyes. He had no idea who was stupid enough in the family to invest in this moronic venture. After all, who the hell thought it was a good business idea to have a hotel inside a deserted island in the middle of the northern Pacific Ocean? where the nearest land was America, with a separating distance of 3,000 kilometers between them. Who would pay to travel here, where the only notable thing about this island was the fresh air and clean beaches, things that could be found in Hawaii or other notable places. The entire island had absolutely nothing unique to grab tourists' attention. Due to that, the entire resort kept rotting for over 15 years, since its creation without any care from the family. No wonder why not a single junior chose this place as his revival mission. They knew that it was impossible to achieve it with the pitiful amount of $30 million budget that the family provided as capital. As if that amount was enough to repair the hotel, the airport, the hospital, the seaport, and more fundamental buildings that were not even on the island. The worst part, Felix couldn't even take a loan or ask for assistance from anyone. With all of those disadvantages, the hotel could only be marked as a dead business venture, without anyone capable of reviving it. Felix's scornful look was swiftly replaced with an appreciation, as a devious plan had taken root since the moment he saw the condition of the hotel. A plan that would turn the impossible into possible, if executed properly. He took a pen and a small notebook from his pocket then wrote the steps of the plan unhurriedly. My plan will kickstart when the Supremacy Games invitation arrives 15 days later. He paused writing and started to dig deep within his memories, to find out what had transpired at that period. The date was 2024-06015, 20 hundred hours p.m. The Earth was revolving around the sun like always, the moon revolved around the Earth as always, and humans lived on the planet arrogantly, thinking to themselves that they were superior to animals and Earth itself which fed and housed them. They believed proudly that they were the only intellectual race in the universe, since they did not manage to find any living being outside of their solar system. But all of those wishful thoughts were removed from their minds when a voice was heard in every living being consciousness. No one was spared, from animals, fish, and birds to finally humans. The moment the decree resounded in their minds, the entire planet seemed like it froze. Everyone stopped whatever they were doing, whether sleeping, having sex, 
driving, posting selfies, or reading. It did not matter as the decree penetrated their consciousness, leaving a voice that said calmly, Dear primitive earthlings, we are the scouting and planting crew of the Alexander Kingdom that owns 10 districts, each having hundreds of solar systems. We discovered your planet by chance when our interstellar coordinator device had a small complication. Now that we introduced ourselves properly, let's get down to business. Based on the Supremacy Games Alliance Treaty, number 12 in the Book of SGA rules, we are obligated to explain the three choices that you currently have. The first choice is to submit to the Alexander Kingdom and swear eternal loyalty to our royal family thus securing your safety from other invaders. The second choice is to refuse and get invaded and looted by our scouting fleet. Based on the primitive level of your technology, our AI calculated your chances of victory are 0.0000000001%. As the only viable way of you having a draw is by some chance the sun goes supernova destroying both of us together. The last remaining choice is to join the Supremacy Game Alliance, which will ensure your survival if you did not break its rules. For more information about the third choice you can only obtain it in person. You have seven days to send someone to represent your planet to give us your final decision. You can find our temporary base in the middle of Antarctica. Here are the coordinates 76.299965148.003021. We await hearing good news from you. The mine transmission will turn off now. The moment the transmission was over, everyone was stunned speechless. As multiple emotions messed up their minds, shock, confusion, disbelief, and lastly fear, bone-chilling fear that sent goosebumps coursing through their spines. They couldn't believe what they just heard, and they didn't want to believe it either. Every human male, female, old, young, president of a country, or a homeless person under the bridge. In the face of the horrifying fact that their entire race, with their so-called advanced technology, was seen as primitive by the extraterrestrials, made them realize that they were just frogs in the bottom of a well, who could only see a small part of the sky through the opening, and not seeing the immensity of it all. 2024 20 hours p.m. That day marked the beginning of a long period called The Great Chaos. Chapter 5 The Great Chaos Over 5 million people died in one day because of that transmission. The elderly who had cardio problems died due to heart attacks because their hearts were too fragile to handle the flood of emotions that raised their blood pressure to the limit after the end of the transmission. Drivers lost control of their vehicles due to a momentary blankness that assaulted them during the transmission and after it. This caused tens of thousands of vehicles crashing into each other on the highways and roads worldwide. Planes pilots, who were about to land, failed to do so properly, due to the same reason as the drivers. Planes crashed into each other during flight as the air traffic control tower did not notify them to change their paths. Every surgeon who was doing a serious operation made errors that caused the death of their patients. Trains collided and many more catastrophes. That day the sky rained flames and bodies. Every road on the world was filled with wails of people begging for help, as thousands of corpses laid on the ground unmoving. Airports were crushed by some planes who failed to land properly or ones who did not manage to stop on time as they smashed into the airport buildings. Hospitals were filled with elderly who suddenly died of a heart attack, and patients who died on the operation tables, and much more gruesome deaths. Yet, that was only the beginning of the great chaos. What followed after was the true chaos, as 8 billion people were scared shitless when they realized that everyone on the entire planet heard the same transmission and not just them individually. The sheer power needed to do this kind of action was unfathomable in their minds. The brave ones left their houses to see the chaotic situation that resulted from the decree while the weak-minded people closed their windows and doors, as they read the news on the TV and internet, which was filled with people sharing pictures and videos from the horrors in their countries, using a hashtag number chaos. The majority of people believed that the extraterrestrial was not messing around, and they would really invade them if their presidents decided to go to war with them. And so, they started frenzy buying and looting food, water, and other necessities to hoard them as much as possible due to the fear of an unknown future. While the prices of luxury materials hit rock bottom, not even reaching 5% of their original prices, gold, silver, gems, metals, concrete, and all those resources that had no value in the face of survival, were thrown in the market like some cheap rocks, to be traded for other important resources. Yet no one bothered to buy them or pick them. After all, 
Who would waste space on a piece of metal that only had value in peaceful times? And these times were definitely not peaceful. Meanwhile, the presidents and kings of the countries in the world were freaking out even harder than the civilians, since they were used to living in the center of attention and having peak authority in their country controlling the faith of the population. Yet now everything turned into a huge joke as they heard the decree. They knew they were not prepared for war. Just a small taste of the invader's power managed to kill 5 million worldwide instantly. So, they could only gather at the United Nations meeting to make a decision. Seven days later, the countries made a vote to send the UN spokesperson to scout their spaceship and make a decision based on the information he received. Half a day later, the spokesperson left their spaceship with fear and a hint of excitement in his eyes. No one knew except the world leaders what he saw and heard there. The only thing known to everyone was that the spokesperson chose the third choice, which was joining the Supremacy Games Alliance. Felix, who was deep in his thought, suddenly woke up from a cold breeze. He realized the sun was about to set, so he closed his journal that was filled with details of his plan and returned to the hotel. The moment he reached there he saw servants, maids and bodyguards crowding over a small area and gossiping with hushed voices. He walked to that spot with curiosity in his face. As he reached, he started wiggle inside the crowd. Let me through. Let me pass through. Fuck who stepped on my leg. When the bodyguards heard Felix's voice, they started to push others to make a path for him to walk through. Soon after, he saw a man wearing a construction outfit with some metal hooks by the waist lying on the ground with one of his arms bent in the opposite direction, while one of his kneecaps was snapped in half. Next to him were one male and one female, wearing Dr. White coats. One was pushing a needle inside the bloodstream of the man who was broken like a vase, and the other was checking his broken limbs. Felix had a bad feeling after seeing this scene. He poked Jack who was next to him and asked out loud, Tell me what the hell happened here in my absence. I do not tolerate my people being harmed in any form. Jack replied back with a whisper, Young master this is Cled, the only repairman on the island. Unfortunately, he had an incident when he was fixing the elevator. He continued while scratching his head in confusion. For some reason, he was rushing to fix it as fast as possible, like he was in a race with someone. Yet, the most amazing thing was that he spent only three hours to fix it. But just as he wanted to celebrate, the metal pole that he was hanging from broke in half, due to rust corroding its interior. Because of that, he fell down. He sighed in relief. Thankfully, the elevator roof was near him, so he was badly wounded, but not flat out dead. Layla summoned the island hospital doctors to check on his condition. Felix stiffly listened to Jack retelling the events that transpired in his absence. I see, fortunately, he did not die. Go inform Layla to take care of his medical bills in my name and make sure to serve him whatever he desired in the hospital. Jack who thought that Felix was being kind replied with his chest out. As you wish young master, it's truly our blessing for being your subordinates. Felix smiled wryly and thought, I doubt that. If it was not for me forcing Layla to take extreme measures to fulfill my request, he would still be fine. He turned around and walked towards the elevator while frowning his eyebrows. This is my second lapse of judgment. I'm still not used to the fact that Earthlings' bodies are still fragile that can die with a single mistake. He stared at the elevator for second and said under his breath, Mr. Kled, don't worry it won't be long before your body returns to its peak form again. Just wait a while, as the invitation is just up the corner. It's time to start adapting to my weak body, or else I will end up dead from overestimating my own strength sooner or later. He glanced at the elevator one last time and walked towards the stairs. He planned to climb them to reach his suite which was on the 30th floor. Just as he started to climb with determination on his face, he saw Layla weeping while sitting on a stair. Felix sighed at this sight and sat next to her. He patted her shoulder gently and apologized. I am sorry for making you go through this. Clut injuries are completely on me, so don't beat yourself up over it, since I will take care of everything soon. Without waiting for her to replay, Felix climbed the staircase. As he climbed further and further away, he heard her say out loud, Young Master Felix, the elevator is fixed. Why didn't you use it? Because I don't deserve it. You guys use it. From now on, I will only use the stairs to atone for my mistake. Meanwhile, his true thoughts were actually to start training his stamina continuously by using them. After all, he couldn't just wait and do nothing, simply because he knew that the invitation would arrive 15 days later. It's better to train in order to get his body a little bit ready for the hellish pain that would come when he tries to awaken by integrating a bloodline. 
Fifteen minutes later, Felix dropped on his knees while taking in sharp breaths each second after reaching his floor. He tried to call for the servants, but his dry horse voice didn't manage to travel far. So he gave up and lay there on the ground, with his chest rising up and down. Can I really do this each day? It seems impossible with my stamina. He shook his head and tried to stand up. Get a grip, Felix. You were lazy in your previous life, and that cost you dearly. It's time to start taking integration seriously. And the first step is conquering those stairs of doom. Afterward, he walked slowly towards his suite while leaning on the wall as a support. A couple of minutes later, he removed his clothes and wore a pajama, then dropped on the bed with eyes closed shut and relaxed expression. He was truly dead tired. Chapter 6 The Pride of Being a Human As Felix began to dive deeper in his dreams, a sudden ear-piercing singing voice, assaulted his subconscious. Yu Yu Ding Dong? Ding Dong. My love for you is growing wide and long. Felix woke up scared shitless, not knowing where the voice came from. He, you really thought you were going to sleep in peace, my dear Felix. Think again, because as long as I don't get your full cooperation to split our souls apart, you are not going to sleep a wink. I will make sure of it, trust me on this one. Asna who was playing dead the entire day laughed evilly in his mind. Felix thoroughly forgot the existence of this witch, or probably just thought if he ignored her, she might disappear. You old hag, you are asking for it. Since you seek war then war it is. Let's see who is going to tap out. He screamed with bloodshed eyes from exhaustion. He then started throwing curses and insults to annoy her to death, since he assumed that she could read his mind. Yet one sentence from her sent him to the depth of despair. My cute Felix, I can control if I want to read your thoughts or not. So your attempts to annoy me are really not going to work. She then chuckled softly and said, You better step up your game or else it won't be fun torturing you. Felix knew he was dealing with a psychopath, a formidable psychopath who was sealed for 20 million years. If he could not find a weakness to exploit, he would forever be threatened to abide by her wishes. Soon enough, he figured out that the only thing this witch seeks was freedom. She was sealed in ruins forever, and when she was finally released, she got resealed in his body again. Honestly, if she was not a madwoman he would feel bad for her. Yet somehow no one wanted to acknowledge that maybe she became what she was now, only due to her being sealed for millions of years. A period unfathomable to humans, who couldn't survive being alone for one year without a person near them or social media. Too bad humans were inherently born to judge a book by its cover. Asna understood what Felix was planning to do after reading his mind. My dear Felix, so that's your idea. Huh, I thought you could do better. She continued mockingly. When you couldn't figure something out, you decided to threaten me using your life. So what if you commit suicide? I would still be free. Don't forget I willingly merged my soul to you just so I can get erased so I have no problem doing it again. Felix, who still couldn't get used to having his thoughts being read, realized he was busted and replied with his chin up. But you forgot to mention something when you tried to control my body. I willingly detonated my soul, just so I won't be under your mercy. So yes I have no problem as well killing myself if I'm going to be your slave. Asna knew he was right as this man had no issue accepting death for freedom. Felix, don't you think we are very much alike? You don't want your will to be controlled, and I don't want my freedom to be sealed. Can't you understand where I am coming from? I just want to be free, damn it. Is that too much to ask? And when did I say, I want to enslave you? I said it three times already. I see cooperation between us. You will help me free myself, and I will help you in your trashy bloodline system. After she finished her piece, silence engulfed the room. She believed that she said enough. Now it was all on Felix. After a while, he closed his bloodshot eyes and lay on the bed in a relaxed manner. Let me think about it first. Just as Asna wanted to sigh in relief she heard him continue. But first I need to see some goodwill from you. So I suggest you apologize to my butthole for the mental pain you caused it. Felix smirked wickedly as he wanted to embarrass her one last time to get back at what she did. Sadly, he forgot one important thing. Asna had absolutely no shame or dignity, just like him. I am sorry Mr. Butthole for not taking responsibility for my actions. I never planned to escape after what I did. It's just the circumstances forced me to leave you. She added with tender eyes and sweet angelic voice. But now that I am here, I will take care of you forever, don't worry. Dark lines immediately took form on Felix's forehead after hearing her messed up apology. Fuck, just forget it. Let me sleep in peace. He closed his eyes with an unpleasant expression on his face. Asna giggled softly with a hand covering her mouth. Boy you are too young to embarrass me. 
Next morning, Felix woke up with dark circles under his eyes. He yawned as he walked towards the bathroom to take a shower, since he was too tired last night to take one. As he cleaned himself, he kept thinking about his conversation between him and Isna. Why did she call my race bloodline system shitty? Is there something wrong with it? Or her race status in the universe is quite high to look down on races like us. Before he lingered on too deeply on the subject, Asna popped out of nowhere and replied to his questions. When I said shitty system, I meant it literally. She then said without shame, I already read your memories when we first arrived here to have a better understanding of your personality and the history of your race. She did not wait for Felix to snap at her for invading his privacy, and hastily added, after reading everything that is useful, I realized that your so-called human race was born with absolutely no legacy or unique attribute. Even the galaxy that you guys reside in is one of the billions of common galaxies that have no special energy. She explained her point. While other races such as the elves have, magic as their legacy, peak affinity to one element based on their subrace as their unique attribute. And finally, their galaxy has mana as its special energy. And that created a perfect cultivation system or in their case can be called magical system. She suddenly sneered in disdain. You guys were born weak with no unique attribute that sets you apart from other races, and no energy in your galaxy to assist you in your cultivation. So you did what you always do, reproduce, and adapt like cockroaches, until finally you guys managed to create a half-baked bloodline system. By combining the bloodlines of beasts from your neighbor galaxy, with your low affinity to the elements, creating this shitty bloodline system that's full of limitations and weaknesses, since it never belonged to you. She ended her shaming by one last arrogant scoff. Only when the universe gives you something, you can proudly use it to its peak potential. Felix just stood there in silence, listening to her shame his race, and the efforts of his human ancestors, like it was merely a joke to her. He then replied to her while grinding his teeth and nails penetrating his palm flesh, with a hoarse voice, shut your filthy mouth. You have no right to look down on us like this. Your mind cannot fathom the amount of bloodshed we humans had to go through. He added enraged while hitting the shower glass with the sight of his fist. Our galaxy was in constant attempts of invasion by void creatures and beasts, and the only thing we had in our arsenal were our brains and wits. We fought them over and over again, and we kept losing and dying like flies without a single resistance. We just preserved and as you said, we reproduced with the speed of light like cockroaches to cover our losses. Years passed by and we adapted slowly. We learned from them what we could, and we took from them what we needed, and our final fruit was this shitty bloodline system that you look down on. His voice cracked from his yelling but he did not stop himself from raging. We used it to repel them, but it was not enough because it was still in its creation process. So billions of humans kept dying and sacrificing themselves. Yet, we did not give up on it. We kept perfecting it and researching bloodline paths that beasts did not even have. We did not plunder their system. We took it and created another one unique to only us humans. The universe did not show us our path so we created it single-handedly. You said we humans don't have a unique attribute that sets us apart from others. You were wrong. We have the best attribute there is in the universe. He thumped his chest and said, We do not tire, we do not falter, and we do not give up in front of adversity. We may fall billion times but we always manage to rise stronger than before. This is the human race. This is my race and I am proud of being part of it. He closed the shower tap and said calmly with pursed lips, you, on the other hand, are part of the superior races. The universe mouth fed you everything you need, gave you everything that you desire, yet you were still captured and sealed for millions of years by others. He calmed down and left the bathroom without clothes on, uncaring about the blood that was dripping from his palms. So I ask you again, how dare you look down on us? He asked with a frigid tone. Chapter 7 Bloodline Integration System Three days had passed since the day Felix snapped on Asna. Ever since then Felix ignored her completely. He did not respond to her apologies, neither did he bother addressing what happened in the bathroom. He just kept training his stamina by climbing the stairs each day and his body muscles, by spending hours in the gym. Lastly, examining the hotel and other facilities on the island, while noting what interested him in his notebook to perfect his upcoming plan. Up the hill, Felix was sitting on a stool and drawing the hotel from above with focus. Yet his focus was broken by a snaw whining again. Felix, please stop ignoring me. I am really sorry about what I said. I did not realize the huge effort humans had to go through for survival. I never interacted with races like you, who are not favored by the universe 
as I spent my entire life surrendered by beings of my race and others who have the same strength as us. So my vision was crooked when I analyzed your race. Now that I know your race bloodline system was made by sweat and blood, I respect it greatly, and I can even assist you in improving it, opening limitless possibilities. Felix could not keep acting deaf after hearing the last part. His heartbeats speed up a bit since he knew that she read his memories, which meant she had full details on how humans integrate. So for her to say she had ways to improve it, moved him greatly. After all, it was the dream of every human in the Milky Way galaxy, to break the bottleneck of the origin realm, and step into a higher realm. Regrettably, over 600,000 years had passed, and no one managed to open up another path forward. Even worse was that human strength was declining slowly over the years, as the spirit of research for bloodline paths had died entirely after the creation of clans. For one to understand why clans were ruining the human's future, one must first understand how the bloodline system came to be. Humans in other parts of the galaxy were born just like earthlings with weak bodies and without an inner core, spirit, or magic to cultivate like other races. The only thing they had was a weak affinity to elements, something every race had as basics. So due to the pressure of war from the beast race and void creatures, they had an idea to combine the inherited bloodline of beasts from their ancestors with their weak affinity to their elements. The first tries ended up in human bodies exploding as they could not handle the pressure of having its original innate bloodline be replaced with another one, especially if the body elemental affinity was different from the beast affinity. So humans tried things differently. Firstly, they created a device that could scan their affinity to the elements. Secondly, they only tried to integrate 1% of the beast's bloodline, instead of the previous 100%. The process was extremely painful, and many died due to not being to handle it. But others who survived it managed to have 1% of other species' bloodline in their bodies. They called this process, the awakening. After awakening successfully one officially starts his journey of purifying the bloodline of the beast. This realm was being called the three stages of purification or in short the purification realm. It includes purifying one's bloodline to reach 99% of the integration. The first step was called the lesser purity, and to achieve it the person needed to reach 30% of integration. The second step was called the greater purity, and it needed 60%. The final step was called the origin purity, which meant the bloodline had almost reached the same purity as the beast itself. It needed the integration to reach 99% which was also the peak of the purification stage. Every time a person reached 15% of integration, he had a chance to obtain a passive ability of that beast, such as fire resistance, night vision, poison resistance, etc. While reaching major steps such as lesser purity, which was 30%, he obtains an active ability of that beast, such as stealth, fire breath, wind bullets, etc. That meant, during the duration of the purification stage, he could obtain three active abilities and three passive abilities of the species. Humans were stuck in this realm for over one million years, not knowing how to improve further or how to get rid of their bloodline shackles. Until a prodigy female called Mariana appeared and solved this problem in the most ingenious way possible. She used the bloodline of a higher tier beast to replace her bloodline, and since beasts followed a strict hierarchy that was etched in their soul, the bloodline could only get replaced obediently. But if she just did this, she would make her entire efforts of integrating with the first beast go to waste, since all the abilities would be replaced as well. To solve this, she did what no one had the courage to do, and that was to etch one ability of her choice permanently from the first beast, in her 1% of the original bloodline. If she failed, she would have destroyed what made her unique from others, as the last remaining 1% was everything to a human. Since the moment someone desired to integrate 100% of another creature's bloodline, he would be nothing but the same copy of the beast. Fortunately, her courage and yearning to improve humankind's strength were rewarded when the process ended up in success. This marked the creation of the second realm, the replacement realm, which was also the longest realm of them all due to it having six stages of replacements. Each stage followed the same principle of the purification realm. Only this time each stage had a different bloodline from a different beast. Starting with the first stage of replacement, the bloodliner was required to change the first bloodline he awakened with by using another beast bloodline. 
that was a higher tier than it. This would allow a smooth transition between them, since if he replaced a beast with another one with the same tier, there would be a war inside the body, as the two would constantly try to outdo each other for the rights to remain within the host. This usually led to the owner bleeding to death. That's why to avoid this, one must respect the hierarchy of the beasts, and only replace the bloodline with another that could oppress it. The current known beast tiers were from tier 1 to tier 7, so for the bloodliner to have a perfect foundation in order to reach the peak of the sixth stage of replacement, he must not replace tier 1 beast with tier 7, to not get stuck in that stage forever without any way to advance since no beast was currently found that could oppress tier 7 beast. A perfect bloodliner must awaken with tier 1 beast, and start replacing it with gradual order from tier 1 to tier 7, until he reached the peak of the 6th stage of replacement. At that point, he would have in his arsenal a total number of 6 different abilities, each belonging to a unique beast permanently etched in his 1%, plus with 3 3 active and 3 passive abilities of the latest stage 6 bloodline, thus creating a human that had a total of 9 abilities, and 3 passives, which he could combine at will to create techniques. The moment humans reached the peak of the replacement stage, they started to win more battles against the beast race, forcing them to retreat when they realized that humans were not to be bullied anymore and be used as food. So, the beasts tried to switch to another race, but would humans leave them to do so? Not in a lifetime. The tables were turned as humans became the predators, and started to counter-invade the beast race galaxy, for all the humiliation they received over the past years. They kept invading planet after planet, killing and taking the bloodlines of unique beasts to be used for research. This war lasted for over 100,000 years, and it only ended when a man goes by the name of Michael Bartit managed to create the next realm after the replacement realm, which he named the Origin Realm. He used the same method of bloodline replacement, but this time, he used his 1%, that had 6 abilities etched to it to oppress the 99% of a tier 7 bloodline. He realized that humans' original bloodline was weak, that's why they had learned from others, and used their paths. But the moment humans' bloodline had the same number of abilities as a tier 7 beast, he saw no reason to keep using their paths anymore. As now it was time for humans to go back to their origin, stronger than ever. And so he tried to devour the 99% of tier 7 bloodline, by using only his 1%. A task only lunatics would try to do since if they failed the process, only death await them. After all, being at the peak of the replacement realm, meant that they had alleged authority in the human race. So, who in his right mind would sacrifice all of that just to follow a hunch that might lead to certain death? But Bartit did not care about authority or his safety. The only thing that was on his mind was to open a path forward, for himself and the future generations. Once again only those who do not fear death obtain what they desire. As three days later, he emerged outside victorious from his battle. Historians to this date claim that people heard the universe applause over his victory, because he managed to defy its arrangement. As humans were born powerless with nothing to support them, yet now, a new subhuman race was born. A human that his own descendants would inherit his bloodline abilities and strength, and those descendants would have their paths paved for them since birth, based on the purity of their ancestral origin bloodline. Bartit named his subhuman race, the White Feathered Humans, out of respect to the latest bloodline he devoured. Since then, the human race stopped their war against the beast race, because an origin realm bloodliner had the status of tier 8 beast. So, they kept them alive, herding them like sheep. Afterward, human's bloodline system improvement was completely halted, as they already conquered the race that gave them pressure in the first place. They were stuck in the origin realm from 600,000 years to this point in time. Author note. Felix didn't live in the period when the beast invasion was happening. I was using his memories to retell the history of mankind in the entire Milky Way galaxy. The knowledge about what happened was public to everyone in the UVR. Continue reading and everything will clear out. Chapter 8 The Three Methods Felix's heart was moved a bit from her speech, so he replied back coldly for the first time in three days. You said you have ways to improve our system, what do you mean by that? Asna, who was expecting Felix to give her the cold shoulder again, rejoiced. She answered back bashfully, not going to lie to you. I have ways that will help you advance further than your race, but managing to improve the entire system where everyone could use it, that's for you to discover, not me. Felix softened his cold expression slightly, after seeing her be honest with him for once. All right, tell me what kind of benefits you will provide me if I agreed to this cooperation. Asna replied with the speed of light, 
as she was waiting for him to ask this for a long time. After reading your memories and seeing how your bloodline system operates, I found multiple ways to remove some limitations for you. The first one is that, due to my race social status being at the peak of the universe, we can pressure any beast or creature that is beneath us with ease. This means that you don't need to limit yourself to your tier choices. You can pick tier 7 beast to awaken with smoothly. The second way I could assist you is by helping you reach the peak affinity of any element you desire. Since I am the origin of laws, elements are but mere plaything to me, but I am extremely weak currently, so I would need a huge amount of elemental resources to help you advance your affinity. Lastly, while others can only hold 6 abilities in their 1% bloodline, thus stopping them from reaching more stages of replacement, you won't need to worry about this as with me merged together with you. Your bloodline is already stronger than other humans by a mile, so you can hold probably more than 9 abilities. This is just my estimate it could be lower or higher, time will tell. She exhaled softly and added one last time. Those are currently, the ways I found from your memories. I don't know if this is my limit or there is more. I need other information to find out. Felix just listened stiffly without interrupting her. Not knowing how to express his shock and disbelief, he knew that just a single one of those methods could already make him one of the strongest humans if not the strongest, if he reached the peak. Soon he relaxed his facial muscles and slowed his heartbeat with difficulty. He coughed to clear his dry throat. You are right those methods are quite useful to my bloodline path, but so what if the price I am going to pay to help you split our souls is big enough to harm me, I would not cooperate with you. Using your methods or not, I will still manage myself well, using only the memories of my past life. Now tell me, what do you require for me? He asked. Asna answered unworried about his rejection. I simply need to meet an old friend from my race. He controls the laws of spirits and souls, so if anyone can help me, it can only be him. She then shook her head. But you don't need to worry about any of this now, since you are too weak to even kill a chicken. Just raise your strength properly, and when I see that you are ready, I will tell you then where to find him. Felix relaxed his tense shoulders, as he honestly did want to cooperate with her for her methods. But if the price was too large to pay, he could only refuse. All right deal. I promise you now if you helped me in my plans wholeheartedly. I will not forsake my promise when I am strong enough to help. He added with a solemn tone. You have my word. Asna thought to herself. With your shameless personality. Your word means jack shit to me. Felix who can read her thoughts, cursed her, you witch, don't you dare defame my good character. We the Maxwell family treats our words like gold. Maybe other members of the family but you, I doubt it. She sneered. Whatever let's head back, it's about to get dark. He stopped bickering with her after noticing that the sun was setting. Speaking of family, I should really give a call to grandpa. That geezer must be alive now. He walked while thinking of ways to help his grandfather avoid getting a heart attack during the upcoming transmission. Just like in his past life, without alerting him or the family, he only needs to survive it, as Felix had hundreds of ways to remove his cardio disease forever. Fifteen minutes later, Felix was taking a shower from all the sweat that resulted from his stairs climb. Yet, his grandfather's problem was still on his mind. Felix quickly figured out that the only way to save his grandfather was by bringing him to the island and preparing a medical team. But he soon shook his head in refusal, as he knew that the medical team would not be much of a help, since the transmission will scare them to death as well, thus they wouldn't be able to do their jobs properly. Hell, they could even make it worse, and Felix did not want to risk this opportunity by relying on others. This left him with only one option, and that was to ease the arrival of transmission by dropping low-key hints to his grandfather. So on the day of transmission, his emotional instability will be mitigated, thus in turn, lowering the blood pressure. That would cause him a severe heart attack. There were many other ways he could use to lower the risk, such as feeding him sleeping pills or knocking him unconscious. But he understood that he wouldn't be able to do so without explaining to his grandfather the real reason. This time I won't let you die, Grandpa. How can you not watch your grandson rise to greatness? He smiled gently while remembering the hidden care he received when he was young. Every time the elders wanted to punish him when he was throwing tantrums and disgracing the family name, his grandfather begged them for leniency towards him, while being well aware that only by trading something of value, that could outset the punishment, would the board agree to his request? If not for his cousin Olivia informing him of the things his grandfather traded for his well-being in the family, he would have never found out the huge amount of assets his grandfather lost for him. He then picked his phone and dialed his grandfather's number. Grandpa, this time it's my turn to take care of you. Ring ring ring? 
Five minutes later, Felix called him over ten times yet no answer. He tightens his grip on his phone. This old bastard never changed. He probably at the bar with the other elders of the family. He stopped calling him and called Olivia his cousin, planning to greet her. Ring ring ring? Unfortunately, she hung up on him five times. Now Felix was really livid. But he did not put his phone down, as he kept calling the numbers of each of his cousins. Yet all of them hang upon him. Enraged, he smashed the phone on the ground not able to hold it in anymore. I see you bastards are still following the Anti-Felix Alliance guidance book. If I don't prank you to death during the family assessment day, I will eat shit. He swore while heading towards the bed with clenched fists under Asna's mocking laughter. Next morning, 10 a.m., Felix woke up while stretching his aching limbs. He then went to the bathroom to take care of his hygiene. As he took off his clothes and entered the shower, he froze for a second as he noticed something he never did. Can Asna see my naked body? I have showered and changed my clothes too many times. Yet she never said anything about it. But she mentioned before that she can see everything. Doesn't that mean I am completely naked like a piece of cheap flesh to her now? Asna rolled her eyes after this idiot finally realized it, but she still didn't want to admit it. What is there to see, you moron? I feel no attraction to your body. Don't forget we belong to different races. Thus our sense of beauty is unlike each other. It's not like you get horny when you see two dogs going at it, now do you? She asked jokingly. Unfortunately, her half-baked retort did not fool Felix, as he knew what she said was complete bullshit. Except for the last part of course. He held tightly a towel around himself, like he was being assaulted by her eyes, and said with a fake angry tone, Don't bullshit me. I am not three years old. I know for a fact that the majority of people are attracted to different races even more, as everyone wants to try new flavors. I don't mind you seeing me naked, but just remember for each time you see my naked body, you own me a look at your naked body as well. It's only fair this way. He scratched his cheek while saying his true goal from all of this without an ounce of shame. Asna who realized she was busted, blushed at his aggressive offer, but she didn't decline it. I don't mind letting you see me naked, but boy can you even handle it. Felix felt his manly pride wounded at her jeer. Just you wait, when I awaken my bloodline, I would be able to enter my consciousness. At that time let's see who is not going to handle who. After saying his piece he entered the shower fully nude with a smirk, uncaring any more about her peering eyes. Chapter 9 Running Naked Ten minutes later, Felix held a broken phone in his hands with frowned eyebrows. It's all those rascals' fault. How dare they be this vicious and shun me out like this? I only played a couple of pranks on them. Did they have to take things this far? He threw the phone in the trash and headed towards the door of the suite. Jack bring me another phone. Mine is broken. I will be back in the evening like usual. Give it to me. Then he ordered Jack who was guarding the door. As you command, young master. Felix nodded and went towards the stairs. Half an hour later, Felix was sunbathing on the beach with a glass of watermelon juice while thinking of his future. He realized that he needs to make a large number of amends to his bloodline path. After all, the methods Asna offered are game-changing on so many levels, starting off by the ability to help him reach the peak affinity of any element he wished for. People would kill to have it, since everyone was born with a random affinity to a random element. It's all about luck for the human race. And during the family assessment day, Felix was scanned by the AP bracelet, and found that he had an affinity to an uncommon great element of poison, in addition to a small affinity to a rare great element of illusion. He sighed. For such a kind and lovable person to have those vicious and tricky elements, truly surprised everyone during the assessment. Asna sneered. Who are you trying to fool? During that day no one was surprised when they saw your elements, only you were. She added more salt to his wound. They probably thought in their minds. As expected only those elements can complement his vile nature. He ignored her and thought of the two elements that managed to help him get some approval from the family board. Poison and delusion. Because of them he did not get straightway disqualified from participating in the training camp. Which was a blissful thing since he got rewarded by uncommon tier 1 great anaconda bloodline that he used to awaken with later on. This time as well, he would receive the same shitty bloodline that gave him the worst head start ever, because only rare ranked beasts or above provide the host with three passives and three active abilities. Meanwhile, the anaconda only gave him two passives and two active abilities that were not even that good. One he awakened at 30% lesser purity called Poison Bite, and the other at 99% origin purity called Strangle which was also the strongest ability of the anaconda. But this time things were going to be different when the family sees his grand plan of turning the island into a paradise. 
that would host only the elites of the world. They would be pleased and gift him a rare rank beast, instead of the trashy anaconda. Felix suddenly asked Asna, how much time and resources do you think you will need to raise my poison and illusion affinity to peak? With your poison affinity being at 59% and illusion at 12%, I would say for the poison, it will take at least from 6 months to a year. If you keep constantly providing me with resources that have the same element, and of course the higher their quality, the lower period needed. As for your illusion element, I can only make a guess since this is the first time I am doing something like this. I will need 10 years using the lowest quality of elements, and this is just because you have some affinity to it, as for other elements that you have absolutely no affinity with. It will take forever to just awake it. That's why you need the elemental potion to kickstart the process. Felix was not surprised by the difficulty of raising elements affinity, since he knew that when a human is born with an element, he is stuck with it for his entire life. Only some peak resources can help one get another element or raise the affinity of it. And those resources were extremely hard for humans to obtain, since they were highly contested by stronger races. Felix quickly made a decision to focus only on his poison element, first to raise it to 100%, so he could get a huge boost of power when using his abilities and during integration. After Felix made his decision on the affinity enhancement method, he moved into the next method which would allow him to choose any bloodline tier to integrate with, without worrying about the smoothness of replacement that would follow after. Asna's social status within the universe was extremely high, to the point even tier 7 beast bloodline could only be replaced without raising a fart in her presence, thus allowing him to awaken even with tier 7 bloodline, instead of building a good foundation like the others gradually from tier 1 to tier 7. But even though he had the freedom to choose any beast tier, he would still be forced to use tier 1 at the start, since the bloodline was being given by the family, and if he didn't choose to use it, he would not be able to integrate like his cousins, and join the family training camp. Even if he wanted something better and knew 100 ways to obtain it, he still needed the AP bracelet first to connect him to the UVR, but to obtain the bracelet he must join the camp, because the winner gets one as a reward. In the end of the day, it did not matter that he could use any tier he wanted, since he had no strength or network to obtain better, so he could only use the one they give him obediently. Only when he obtains the AP bracelet and enter UVR, would he have the freedom to act as he wished. So getting it is the most important step in his future. As for his human bloodline having the capacity to hold 9 abilities, for now, it's quite useless. When he reaches the peak of the 6th stage of replacement, only then would he start thinking about ways to use it properly. Amused, he raised an eyebrow after realizing that all of the three methods were completely useless to him now. He could only integrate his bloodline like the rest. Alright, this is the plan. For now, shock the elder board with my hotel, earn well-ranked bloodline, join the family training camp, beat the shit out of my cousins for hanging up on me and win the AP bracelet that will open up my path. He took his clothes off and went for a swim, while taking jabs at a sna that she could only watch and not swim like him. Furious at his teasing, Asna promised him that he wouldn't be sleeping tonight in peace. Felix immediately closed his mouth shut and dove deeper in the sea. Asna smirked at his surrender. Back at the hotel, Felix was dialing a number on his new phone that Jack handed to him. Ring 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 cluck. A furious voice resounded in the room. What do you want rascal? You still have the nerve to call me after taking the family tradition as a joke. You are lucky you are in the middle of nowhere. If not, I would have beaten the shit out of you. Felix kept the phone away from his ear and replied with a joyful tone. Ayo, old geezer, I missed you as well. And stop getting angry on me, damn it. Your fragile heart can't handle it. His grandfather coughed as he tried to yell at him. Who are you calling old geezer? Cough. I see you have grown some balls after staying in that island for a year. Just you wait I am coming, and I will bring my belt with me. Felix was overjoyed when he heard this since he was expecting a fierce rejection, when he requests him to travel here. Ha ha I dare you to come here and whip me. I Felix am already an adult. I don't fear you anymore. Good, good, good boy. I hope you will have the same courage when I arrive tomorrow. Felix then heard his grandpa call out loud. Jace, cancel all my plans tomorrow. I'm heading to Sky Pearl Island. Wait for me, boy. For my belt thirst for some blood. Felix realized he overdid it bit, as his grandfather whipping techniques, which were deeply etched in his memory, started to resurface. He gulped and said with a shaky voice, Grandpa, 
Don't you think it's unnecessarily to bring your whip when visiting your dearest grandson? Haha, <laughs> it's too late for regret now boy. I will see you tomorrow afternoon. Goodbye, I'm hanging up, got paperwork to do. Felix would have believed him if he did not hear the elders at the background singing and drinking to their heart content. Knowingly their sick bodies couldn't handle it. Felix said warmly, All right take care of yourself, see you tomorrow. On the American soil, in New York suburbs, in well-furnished bar, an old man with a white beard, bald head, wrinkles all over his face, and muddy brown eyes, had a frown on his face while staring at the dark screen of his phone. Why is this bastard acting all soft? Did the island really change him? Just last year he was the thug of the family. It seems I really need to go visit him tomorrow to check on him. He really worries me to death. Just as he wanted to reminisce on the times he spent together with his grandson, a slap was heard loud and clear in the bar, as a hand smacked his bald head. Smack! The moment the slap was resounded, the entire bar went quiet for a second, then exploded with mocking laughter. Ha 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 ha! Felix's grandfather woke up from his shock by their laughter. Benjamin, you degenerate subhuman. If I don't kill you today, I will run naked around the bar. I swear on it. He drank an entire bottle of beer within a blink of an eye and threw it at Benjamin, who was hiding under the bar counter expecting such a retaliation. That night at 2 a.m., people swore they saw from their windows an old man running naked with pervert drunken face around the bar. Chapter 10 Grandfather Arrival After hanging up the phone, Felix ordered room service to bring him his dinner. He lay on the bed with one leg above the other while contemplating. Now Grandpa is coming tomorrow. How am I going to hold him on the island for over 10 days until the transmission passes? Asna, you are the expert when it comes to being sealed. Care to share some ideas on how to seal my grandfather on the island? He suddenly asked Asna. The only reply he received was Asna holding her middle finger in the air while cursing, FCKU, and don't bring me into your family problems. Felix sighed helplessly as he knew for a fact that his grandfather could not stay away from his retired drinking buddies. So he would leave in a heartbeat the moment he checks on Felix's well-being. This left Felix with three options, and none of them were good. Firstly, he could lock him up in the suite forcefully, but that wouldn't work since the servants would listen to his grandfather's orders than Felix's. Secondly, Felix could put him in a coma, but the island trashy hospital wasn't able to handle two patients in a coma at the same time. After all, Cled was already there. Not to mention, he wouldn't be able to explain himself when his grandfather wakes up. The last option and also the most feasible was for Felix to be the bad guy and use his grandfather's unconditional love against him. I will pretend that I have depression due to loneliness on the island and I need a family company, or I will harm myself. If Grandpa saw this he will stay until he makes sure I am well. Sigh, it's quite a screwed up plan. But to save him from dying, anything is worth it. Ten minutes later, Felix ate his dinner and changed into his pajamas. He then covered himself with a blanket and entered deep sleep. Sadly it was short-lived, as Asna kept her word and sung with a loud voice like before. Yaya ding dong, ding dong my love for you is growing white and long. Felix woke up with a roar, enough, you which I have a big day tomorrow, I need to be in my best shape, or my grandpa will assume I am taking drugs again, why would I care, you kept insulting me and teasing me today, you reap what you sow, she said, humphing, Felix sighed helplessly and apologized, alright I am sorry, can I sleep in peace, now please, since you are sincere, go ahead I won't bother you anymore, Felix relaxed after hearing that and closed his eyes again, Morning 10.30 a.m. 9 days before the great chaos, Felix turned the TV on and entered the Netflix menu. Afterward, he clicked on every movie he saw about an alien invasion, from the classics like Independence Day to new ones that came out in 2024. His plan was to watch an alien invasion movie each day until the transmission arrives, so his grandfather subconscious would register that the alien invasion was no big deal. This would slightly lower the emotional instability that would force his blood pressure to rise, and gives him a sudden severe heart attack. He didn't know if it was going to work or not, but it was worth the try. After creating a movie playlist full of them, he turned off the TV and opened his phone to scroll the internet and see the current news. He had absolutely no idea what was happening in the outside world. Look and behold, the crisis in the Middle East had reached a new peak during 2024, as the war between Saudi Arabia and Iran had already reached the point of using armed troops. The war had truly blown between the two. Worldwide citizens followed each update about the current situation of the war 
due to their fear of nuclear war erupting between the two. Since Iran had them and America that was supporting Saudi would not hesitate to use them as well in retaliation. Your war will turn to an absolute joke nine days later during the Alexander Kingdom arrival. So enjoy it while it lasts, as a new battleground for the entire planet to fight is about to arrive. He then switched to the entertainment section that was booming and chuckled in amusement after remembering that the entertainment platform was going to get completely uprooted. Hollywood, Bollywood, animation, and game studios, everything had to shut down when the universal virtual reality, UVR, arrived. Since everything that one wished for or desired was there with 100% realism, not to mention the greatest fighting platform that was supported by multiple races, the Supremacy Games. Who would want to watch a movie when you can live it? Who would want to play a role-playing game? when you could be your own self inside a boundless magical world. Finally, who would want to watch sports or martial arts competitions which were filled with rules and limitations for the safety of the players, when the Supremacy Games gave jack shit about them? No one would give a crap if you died in the games, as it was part of the rules. He quickly got bored from what he was seeing and turned his phone off. Then, he changed into a sports outfit and left the suite, heading to the gym. Two hours later, Felix stood in front of the mirror composably, fixing the business suit that he wore to welcome his grandfather. After all, regardless if the hotel was a lost cause in the eyes of the public, Felix still had to show that he was taking this project revival seriously when he meets his grandfather. Otherwise, he would never hear the end of it. After admiring his handsomeness for a while, he left the suite and ordered Jack, drive me to the airport. My grandfather is landing there soon. The legendary Robert Maxwell is arriving on the island. This visit must be accompanied by a banquet, Jack said with admiration while hastily chasing after him. After getting out of the elevator Jack suddenly asked, May I have your permission to make the servants prepare one for the evening? Do as you wish. Just keep in mind not to add alcohol. You know my grandfather's condition. You have nothing to worry about, young master, as I will supervise the banquet personally. All right, hop in and drive. It won't be long before he lands. After driving for half an hour, they reached an old airport that was covered in rust and growing moss, making it appear like an abandoned building that was about to collapse on itself. If not for the security guard, who seemed more like a homeless person sitting next to the entrance. The entire view would have looked even more desolate and grim. A couple of minutes later, Felix and Jack were squatting next to the guard with a can of beer in their hands. They chatted and played cards to spend time before the arrival of his grandfather. At 2.15 p.m., the deafening noise of a private jet landing resounded in the entire airport. The guard, Jack, and Felix approached the jet while wearing a noise-canceling headset. As they arrived near it, the door of the jet slowly opened, followed by stairs coming down until they touched the ground. In front of the door an old man wearing a black suit, white shirt, and blue tie, stood sternly with his hands behind his back. His bald head shone each time the sunlight passed near him. His eyes were solemn, showing that he came here for serious business. Too bad that image was ruined after they saw a long thick belt that was coiled around his hand like a boxing glove. Felix who just about to rush with joy and hug his old man stopped immediately after noticing the exact belt that was used to discipline him in his childhood. So, he stepped back with a cold sweat covering his forehead, not daring to move forward anymore. Memories of his days living at his grandfather's mansion, after his parents' death, flooded his head with images he could never erase. He could already hear in his mind his grandfather's voice, how dare you steal your cousin Olivia underwear when she was taking a shower? You bastard forced her to walk around wearing nothing underneath. Her parents came to complain to me that she cried the entire day. Then his voice weeping and wailing from the pain of his ass being whipped by the belt. I am sorry. Please stop. I will never do it again. Awaya. He was 12 years old at that point. Felix ejected those memories back in the deepest part of his mind and sealed them again. He truly felt that his young self was a bastard that needed a beating. You are still a bastard though. Asna murmured under her breath. Felix ignored her and walked towards his grandfather with a stiff smile. Grandpa, I missed you to death. Welcome to Sky Pearl Island the most beautiful island in the world. Unfortunately, his claim would have sounded more believable if it was not for the dirty airport behind his back, making loud rusty metal noises from the wind.